Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon, Professor. Good yeah. afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is like, yes. Awesome. Good afternoon, Savannah. Good afternoon, Amy. Good afternoon. I think that was Caroline. I'm not totally sure. Um, good afternoon. Or maybe it was Amanda. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, Shamil. Good afternoon, Eldo. Good afternoon. Did I say Amanda? Did I say Caroline? Hey, David. Good. Oh, good. Okay. And here, oh, wait, more people coming. I love it. I mean, see, if only this were life, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Um, good afternoon, Caitlin. Did I say that? I'm not sure. Sorry if I'm being repetitive. All right. I'm going to the chat now. Um, good afternoon, Sam. You well, did I say Shamil and Elda? Okay. But I'm going to the chat. Hold on. Good afternoon. I know it's, I, I'm either going to heaven, I'm either going to heaven or hell for all of this. And then so are you. No, you're going to heaven. Um, I mean, electron cathode ray tube, um, like terminal. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, Amanda. Good afternoon, Alicia. Good afternoon, David Kahn. Good afternoon, um, uh, Kevin, Lynn, good afternoon, Jamalette, good afternoon, Amy, good afternoon, David, and everyone. He just got multiplayer co-op for that reference. Good afternoon, Caitlin. Good afternoon, Shamil. Good afternoon, Adan. Hi, Christina. Good afternoon, Felicia. Good afternoon, Sophia. And wait, now I'm going back. I saw other people. And did I say Felicia, who's like brought her avatar to three-dimensional proportions? Good afternoon. Who else did I, mean? did I say everybody? I think David, Adan, Sophia. Mimi, Jamalette, Christina, Alicia, oh, and Chloe is coming in. And again, this is not a secret attendance subterfuge, I promise, because I don't know who's not here. I just know who is here. I guess that is, a but it's not. Anyway, okay. Um, all right, we're going to just keep going. I know there's another Funkadelic week in the schedule, in the calendar. Um, it's weird, but we're just going to, because I... I think you'll correct me for one. I think we don't have classes Wednesday. We're just gonna keep going. So your homework technically isn't too. Uh, good afternoon, Chloe. I mean, sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. And direct messages far and wide. Yes. Good afternoon. It was, um, um, oh, wait, more people still coming. Um, and the homework is continued. So the homework is. Just, I'm just not gonna make a whole big homework is continued. I'm in strange scattershot orders. Like, honestly, it, it's coming back to you in the order that the notifications appear in my device, just so that I can keep going through the stack in a way where I know. It. So it, there's no rhyme or reason to the order. And some of you I owe a ton to, and some of you have gotten a lot back and it doesn't make any sense. And I'll try to use one of these holidays to actually catch up linearly, but hopefully you're seeing that things are coming back just in a weird order. Um, and you, but still, the, I, and I want to just get to the material today. Again, a couple of people have texted me just to make sure that I got their thing and you can do that, that, you know, in other words, that your, your work is not MIA. I can check with you in live time. Like if you want that assurance, but also please understand to all of you, all of you, as you're getting things back in scattershot order, first of all, we're still not worried about an exam. I don't even want to think about it any more than you do. Like we got to get through a full week of classes first before we can even think about that. There will never be like a surprise exam just like dropped on you out of nowhere, I promise. Like once there is one, we're going to have time to prep and have a practice exam and all that. And plus it'll be take home, you know, have five days to do it, blah, blah, blah. So I don't want to think about an exam yet. And even if some other sections are having them, they meet in person, we meet live. I mean, we meet, you know, uh, remote synchronously. So it's different. So, okay. But also about the homeworks, like they're coming back, as I say, they're coming back in weird fits and starts and weird orders. But all of that means the one can, thing to you and so means is if there's anything that you still uh, you know still want to turn in or do it like no, nobody is being marked late in any way shape or form in any directions people that are handing in things super early it's like recognized i'm aware of it it's like huge karmic and maybe even academic like applause plus you just feel more comfortable and on top of things and you understand class better if you do that but if you if there's still things that you owe do not let some fear of lateness or penalty or something stop you from still turning it in don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good if you know what i'm saying everybody can still get full credit for anything they do until like i say otherwise okay but with face means until i catch up to you okay 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 uh, so let's go to material. So, and uh, okay, I'm sounding frantic because I always do these days. I want to go back to where we were in the material. Um, sorry, I want to go back. Yeah, I want to go back to where we left off last 
Wednesday, as far as I'm concerned, like quick summary or quick review and recollection. Let me change a few also. But again, stop me anytime. Like I have my agenda, but my agenda is what to do if you don't have a better agenda. Like honestly, that's my concept of what do you call it? Um, a lesson plan is like what to do if no one has any better ideas. And I'll always have one because I've thought about this before, but stop me at any time if I'm, or accelerate me at any time where I think we are right now is we were in the middle of going over homework four, sheet four. Last time we were in the middle of it. That's what we're gonna go back to now. There were some sidebars as we went, like homework four is in principle about this first equation more people coming. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This first, there's two equations on this page, as there often are, kind of like one is where we are, one is where we're going, kind of thing. The top, the top equation on this page was the bottom equation on last Wednesday's, or it was one of the equations on last Wednesday's page. Um, I believe I have now introduced it. We're going to reintroduce it. I, we're now like it's now in action. This top equation, yeah, I definitely have introduced it. It is one of the equations we're responsible for. It says in English that average acceleration is defined to be the change in instantaneous velocity per time. Like that's what that equation says, right? And, and we're basically practicing it and seeing it in action throughout homework four. It says average acceleration is defined to be the change in instantaneous velocity per time. Okay, that's what it means. That's what we keep practicing. But you, you know, you saw it introduced last week. Um, just to note, you also had a different equation that we spent a lot of time talking about last week. Might have seemed like a sidebar or something. We had an equation, a definition for instantaneous velocity itself, like as opposed to average velocity. Right? We now have. We have like three notions of velocities running now in this class. Like we have a notion of average velocity. We have a distinct notion of instantaneous velocity. We have two different equations, two different definitions of those two different, very, very super related, but different ideas, right? And then we also have this conceptual discussion going on where we're saying that any velocity that we're ever talking about, whether it's instantaneous or average, is always necessarily a relation between two objects rather than a property of one object, right? So we are like running three parallel or three uh, like, like distinct, but certainly related threads throughout this class on the larger concept of velocity. The velocity of, uh, the, the concept of velocity is very large because at root velocity basically means motion through space and time. And that's what the entirety of physics is about, okay? So, we're, so we got these three notions of velocity running. Now we're at the point where we're saying if you change your velocity from one instant to another, then um, we call that acceleration. That's, you know, we're gonna be applying that equation throughout the homework four, but, the bottom equation on this, I mean, the, the second equation that you're seeing on the sheet, I just want to alert you, is not, is a new, is yet a new equation. It's where we're going to go to, hopefully by the end of today. It, it, it's going to, for some of you, perhaps, some of these equations are starting to get confused or confusing, maybe. Like, like I'll tell you right now, if you include that one, if you include this equation, that's the second one on the sheet that you're looking at right now, or I mean the second one on the board that you're looking at, it is new. You have not seen it before in this class. It looks very similar to some other things that you have seen, but you haven't seen it yet. It'll get introduced and sort of taught or whatever today, I hope, I think, and I'll tell you if not. Um, but, uh, but, but, as, but it is yet another different equation that has to do with average velocity. It is, you, and I don't wanna confuse you. I wanna point out something that might be confusing in the world. We only have, as of the end of today, or as the end of this sheet, we'll have a total of five equations. Three of them seem to have to do with velocity. It's very easy to get them confused if you're not at least aware that you want to put effort into not doing that. Um, so quick, so the goal of today is to get to this second equation, is to practice the first equation. The goal of today, the agenda of today, is to practice the first equation in the context of homework four and to get to the second equation by the end of homework four. Okay, that's the goal. 
um, just have with way back in your mind, if you're understanding that we're trying to get to the second equation, if you flip through your notes or you look back or something, you may well think, wait, don't we already have an equation that has V bar on the left side of it? Don't we already have something for V bar? Yes, we do. But if you look back in your equation, the thing we have for V bar is a triple equal sign equation. This one is a double equal sign. What we already have in this class that we're relying on heavily for all ever is a definition of average velocity. What this thing is that we're gonna to get to, hopefully by the end of the day, is a sometimes truth, is a, uh, is a recognized, um, uh, discovered or conditional uh, observation that is sometimes true about average velocity, but it's not always true and it's not its definition, just to alert you, okay? So the other one is a definition, a triple equal sign for average velocity. This one that we're gonna to get to is a double equal sign consequence of average velocity. If nothing else, that highlights again how important the distinction is to me in physics between triple equal signs and double equal signs. Okay, but that all said, we're gonna go back. If there's no question, I'm just looking, I don't think there's a question, but stop me at any time. We're gonna go back to homework four to the question where we left off. So bear, and we're gonna be practicing this first equation, uh, which I think is the, and I'll give you a summary list of all five equations as soon as, you know, either by the end of today or the next period, just so you can see. So bear with me for a second. Let me just change the view on the screen and pull up my other sheet. Bear with me for a second. Okay. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. Oh yeah, I, well, okay. Um. Okay, sorry, I was just looking at that. Okay, so, right, so this is the situation. Again, I'm trying trying to go a little faster. I'm, for those people who are paying attention or trying to model their homework, I am, sorry, I'm just changing the view. Okay, I am trying to do the step method. I'm So I have the dot, so this is question three on homework four. Here's my little diagram. All the facts that I know of a Toyota that goes from six, uh, zero miles per hour to 60 miles per hour in two minutes. Um, uh, I should probably, all right, I'll even do a little bit better than that. I guess I should say this and this, and I'll say this, okay. Um, so the initial velocity, V naught is zero miles per hour. The final velocity for this experiment that I'm paying attention to is 60 miles per hour. Um, and again, to even be more, right, a bet, that, that's sort of a customary English or American way of writing that, but physics wise, what do I mean? I mean, miles, per hour, right? Um, so, so that's V naught and V. Please note by V naught and V, you just like X naught and X, we mean a velocity at time equals zero and a velocity at the final time that we're paying attention. Notice that V naught and V are each of them. They are each instantaneous velocities. Put another way, initial, you'll hear the term initial velocity a lot, like V naught, 
And you'll hear the term instantaneous velocity a lot. It's easy to confuse those in your mind accidentally, unconsciously. Initial velocity is a subset, is an example of an, an instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity means any velocity at any single moment, right? It means the limit of average velocity between two moments. Sorry, it, instantaneous velocity, as we said last time, means average velocity between two points in the limit as the two points become arbitrarily close to each other, right? In the limit as the two points in time become so close to each other that they are almost indistinguishable from each other, right? That, I.e. it almost seems like one instant in time. That's what instantaneous velocity means. Initial velocity is just an example of that. The instantaneous velocity at the initial moment. And final velocity, V itself, is an example of instantaneous velocity, the, the, the velocity at the final instant. All right, so we have these two facts here, zero miles per hour at the beginning, 60 miles per hour at the end. Um, at the end of what? At the end of a two-minute time interval that it took my Toyota to speed up. Okay, so it's asking what's the average acceleration for this time interval. Um, and so I've done step one diagram i've done step two what is a question i probably should do um so step three uh step three uh i'm going to do a gdp the definition of average acceleration is change in velocity you know to the final in time right that's that's my gdp my step number three you might want to make a note of that in your notes i'm not doing it right now um so that's my gdp so now i'm turning the page you can tell me to turn back if you want to um, so now I'm going to do PAW. I'm going to plug in the numbers that I already have in this ca case. So I'm plugging in. So here, average acceleration, average rate of acceleration from the beginning to the end is 60 miles per hour. This is not supposed to be a trick. This is supposed to be a practice. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, if you think this is straightforward, you might well be right. Um, so now this is all PAW, step four. So I'm doing, you know, 60 divided by two, 30 miles per hour per minute. Now, this, here's the point. That's the answer. And that's final answer circled. That's step five, right? So I just did the four or five steps. I did them all, I believe. I did them all explicitly. It's clear one step, the next step, the next step. But I didn't label them. I mean, you always can. But I'm saying, even if I don't label them, they're all here, right? Okay, so there's my five steps, okay? And here's my answer. The average acceleration for this period of time is 30 miles per hour per minute. Let's talk about that for, and that is the answer to this question. The question asked for in those units, those are legitimate units. Lots of different, they don't have to be metric units to be legitimate. Lots of units are legitimate. And furthermore, they are definitely legitimate because that's what the question's at, presenting the facts in those units. And the question's asking for the answer in those units. So if this were an exam or whatever, or if this were government funded research, like that's the answer we're looking for. I could write it one other way just to make something clear. I, I really do want to make, whoa, hello. Like I want to be as explicit as possible at least once that, you know, units are like numbers, like the rules of arithmetic apply to units the same way they do to numbers, multiplication, division, fractions, all that stuff. So miles per hour per minute ultimately means that both hours and minutes are in the denominator of a big fraction. However you want to think about, you know, or, I mean, I mean, I know this is more comfortable to some of you than it is to others, but like miles per hour, over a minute, you can write it any one of these ways. They're all equivalent. But the bottom line is that both the hours and the minutes are in the denominator. There are two references to time in the denominator of any acceleration answer we ever get. They're always, in any acceleration measurement, it's always in units of space, 
per time, per time again. Oh, because we're not looking at the rate at which something advances through space per time. We're looking at the rate at which something advances through space time rates per time, right? If this is a car, oh, this is a car. If this is a car, this number is not telling us how fast the car is getting from one place to another. This number is telling us how fast the needle on its speedometer is getting from one marking to another, if you follow me. Literally, this is how fast the speedometer needle is moving. It's not how fast the car is moving. It's how fast the car is changing how fast it's moving. Fastness is already space per time. This is space per time, per time. So there always will be, and that's either clear or it's not. I mean, but, but like, but it's worth thinking about. These units, so I'm saying if you're having an acceleration rate, there had better be two references to time in the denominator. Could they be different like here, like hours and minutes? Sure, sure. If that's a helpful in the context, that's legal, especially it's very legal here because that's the question asked for. Is it always the way we do it? No, which is why there's a second part to this question we'll get to in a minute. This is not always the way we do it, but let me tell you something. It's not wrong. And also it can be very, very um, intuitively clear, just like Celsius degrees might be more scientific than Fahrenheit degrees, but come on, we live in America. Like, like we, most of us are still much more intuitively, most of us who have lived in America for a long time are much more in tune to Fahrenheit number. Like if someone says, oh my God, it's 20 degrees today. We're like, oh, and like we put on a sweater. But if they say, oh, sorry, I mean, it's 20 degrees Celsius. Then we probably sit there and first we're like, really? Did you have, like, that's annoying, you pretentious, confusing person. You And then we have to like do math in our head. We don't, a lot, many of us, like obviously if you've come from another country or something and you've got, you know, electron bless you. But I mean, and I, I mean, really like obviously, and that's probably better that you know Celsius. But we feel, fa and same thing on the highway when a cop pulls us over and they're like, do you know how fast you were going? You don't go like, um, let me do the conversion. Hold. I think I was going like 15 kilometers per set. Like, no, you're like, oh God, yeah, I was going 80 miles per hour. Cause we feel, anyway, my point is sometimes it's instructive to use units that we actually feel and believe in. And here, what I'm saying is what this car is doing, when we say that this car is accelerating at a rate of 30 miles per hour per minute, what we're saying is exactly what, what it seems to be saying. We're saying every minute, this car is going faster by, oh, excuse me, we're saying on average, on average, every minute, this car is going faster by 30 miles per hour. We are not saying every minute this car travels 30 miles. That's a harder question, which we have to get to next. I don't know how far the car is traveling yet. I mean, like maybe I do, but I, we don't yet. I'm saying in three minutes, this car will be going 90 miles per hour in four at this rate, if it keeps up this rate. In four minutes, it'll be going 120 miles per hour. I don't know how far it's gone, but I know that's how fat, right? So this is a rate this, at which the speedometer needle is advancing. That's what this says. Every minute, it's going faster by 30 miles per hour. Okay, so that's that. And stop me if there are questions, but it looks like there are none. <laughs> okay, so then if we want to put these in slightly more, you, oh, cool. I love what he does that. That's okay. I mean, that's, you might, thank you. It helps me a lot. Thank you. You all can do that. You can also privately chat, doesn't make sense. Or you could even privately chat. It made sense 10 minutes ago. Can you please move on? Yeah, no, but thank you, Nick. Good, fine, excellent. Thank you, Nicholas. And please submit that for 85,000 points of class participation and 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 a shiny Pokemon card. Okay, now, um, so then the next, so now we're gonna like get the same information in slightly more classic scientific units that have their own advantage and disadvantage. So, so now they want us to, so this is part B, I think. I think it's called B, yeah, B. Oh, sorry. Uh, very good question. Um, how about, are you really, okay. Um, uh, Calyrex Ice Rider V, V Max. We can talk after class. I got options. And if you ever visit my office, that <laughs> okay. By the way, this counts as, if you're thinking like, wait, I can't, 
he gets to get participation points for Pokemon jokes? Well, first of all, yes. And that's totally fair because come on. But second of all, you can make other kind of jokes and get points. But, and anybody who ever wants to visit my office, oh yeah, we'll talk Pokemon. Oh, please. We won't even talk it. We'll just battle. Okay. Um, Pokemon's the greatest. Pokemon's the reason I now understand biology, which I never did for 30 years of teaching physics. But okay. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yes, he just got it. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to, okay, B, part B. Um, oh, totally. Oh my God. I, please don't even get me started. Oh, you got me started. Yes. I mean, mostly I play the card game. I mean, I, I do play the video, like Sword and Shield. I'm all about it. Um, I mean, I joined the whole world late. Like I followed my younger son, not my old. So I'm catching up, but I play the card game very, like twice a week, very seriously with my younger son. Like when we have like, get, don't even get me. I mean, if any of you play the card game, come to my, I mean, like I'm sending out my deck right now. I mean, don't, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not trying to alienate anybody. There's like room in this class for everybody. But yes, I love Pokemon. I think it's great. I mean, I, they can have all, they already have my, my son can't go to college. We can't afford, cause I've already given the Pokemon, you know, the Nintendo company and the whatever company, uh, the Game Freak company, like his entire college fund. But I think it's worth it. I think he's learning more from Pokemon than he will at most colleges, except for this one. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, Shield is awesome. No, Shield is awesome. No, it's uh, it's great. I, I mean, Galar region, come on. No, I'm t all right. This is see, you're gonna get if you ever want to get me off the topic. Oh yeah, Pokemon's a good way to do it. Um, and don't even okay. See, oh my God, I'm see. This is the problem. They didn't. I didn't know. A, okay, I'm back. All right, part B. But yes, well played, everybody. Um. Uh. Um. Uh, I'm, I, I'm literally stalled now. I'm literally about to put my Pokemon TCG online screen name in the chat for people. That would not be appropriate, but it probably will happen at some point. All right, I'm back, I'm back. Part B, part B, now it wants, same, same facts, but it's asking in, I believe, meters per second squared. What's the average acceleration? Okay. Now I, hello. It, right. Uh, something happened to the screen, I'm sorry. Um, now this is just a, okay. I mean, in some ways, like you're very advanced science students. You've taken by, you've taken chem. In some ways, this is like, maybe it's just a unit conversion question. I know that. And I know in principle, we all know how to do unit conversions. And I know even more that we all hate doing unit conversions. I know all this. It's kind of important to do it once here for the sake of acceleration, because the units, first of all, they are surprising if you've never seen them before. And you maybe you have seen them in high school. Oh, is it? Oh, maybe you're right. I'm sorry. Is it? Uh, uh, Thank you. you. You may well be right. And that's definitely class participation. And I definitely have to open up a portal. Please remind me for people who politely catch my errors for real. Uh, yes, she's right. Is that Carol? Thank, wait, was that private? I'm sorry. No, it wasn't private. Thank you, Caroline. Um, that's awesome. You're totally right. Please text me later to remind me to open up a portal for people politely catching my errors. I'm dead serious. She's right. Um, and plus it's good anyway, because this all didn't show it's still the same point that it's a unit conversion, but she's right. What I asked in the sheet were miles per second squared. Now, I'm even gonna say, we're gonna get the answer, okay? And it is just a unit conversion and you probably, and it's, and by the way, it's a very, very small number. I, I, I should, then if you got a very, very small number, you're probably right. If you got a number that's something, I think it's, uh, we'll have to figure out in a second. I think it's like 1.4 times 10, to the negative fourth, like if you do it in scientific notation, you're gonna get something like 0. 0.0014. So maybe someone could put in the chat the answers you, please put in that, you can put it privately if you want, or in fact, this will save us a little bit of a hassle. Please put in the chat, anybody, doesn't matter if all of you do it, you all get points. Put in the chat or in the private chat, the answer you got, especially if you think it's the right answer, cause it will actually save us. I think, I'm telling you right now, I think it's like 0. 0.0014 or something, but I'm just, wait, there we go. Sweet. Oh, so point oh oh oh. Yes. Point, okay. One. Cool. Oh, great. The, I don't even think it's I was saying right, but that is what I was remembering. Great, great. Thank you. And you can all still do it, even though I'm saying great. You can do it. You can even copy from the other people because at least it shows you're paying attention. Yes, I think that's going to be the. I think that is the answer. The thing you're all seeing in the chat now. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, private chat person. I do see you, and you can still submit it for points, even though it's probably blah, blah, blah. 
but yeah, so it's this tiny number. So first, okay, that also tells me I don't have to dwell. But I, even before I get it, I wanna say to everybody, miles per hour per minute is legit. It tells you something like we said a second ago, miles per second squared is also legit. Meters per second squared is perhaps even most scientifically classic for sure. And you ultimately want to be able to think in MKS, sure. But understand that all of these different units are have advantages and disadvantages. The key, the key point is, first I'm just doing this correctly for people that didn't do it. But yes, I believe that's the answer that's in the chat. It's a tiny, tiny number. Scientific notation is encouraged at this point. Um, it's a tiny number because what they had to do so this is my quick review of stoichiometry, so to speak, or unit conversion. Because again, some people are very good at it, but hate it. Some people are very good at it and like it. Those are rare. Um, some people are very bad at it and hate it. So, okay. And that's for, oh, Felicia, good. By the way, I'm totally glad she had the guts to say that. What Felicia's saying in the chat, that she left it, that's totally legit. In fact, yes. Unless told otherwise, that's awesome. Uh, totally fine. Um, and in some ways, that's huge. Awesome, Caitlin. Awesome. I like to see this feels like a conversation. We're all for, um, uh, like polka hugs forever. Okay. Like, why is my boy? Welcome to my bar mitzvah. Today I am a man. Okay. I, yes. Cool. You can leave it that way. And it might even make more sense to a lot of people. And, and maybe it even saves me a moment. Notice what they have is a huge number in the denominator because. Because if you can do a certain number of miles every hour, you do a lot fewer miles every minute and you do even fewer miles every second. One thing I just, I'll take, well, maybe I don't even have to tell you all this. The way with me with unit conversions, I'm gonna do it just now, just for one sake so it's clear. I mean, one time so it's clear, but just for all of you, because like everything else, calculus, trig, you know, sometimes we gut our way through it and we kind of can get it right on test, but we might never feel that comfortable with it. My ultimate dream, my ultimate goal for all of you is that with all of this science stuff, you're not just good, you're not just uh, tenuously competent at it, but you're so on top of it. You, you feel so comfortable with it that you actually have room and space to love it. Like that's the goal, right? If you're going on in science research or science profession, you don't just want to be able to do this. You want to feel so comfortable with it that you have room to love it and play, right? So like really, so unit conversion, which seems like a drag to everybody at first, even the people that maybe did it right in the chat, although I'm psyched to see that like seven people at least in the chat did it right. And that's like more than many semesters, seriously. But so I'm going to risk boring them for a minute and say with unit conversion, with a lot of people, they kind of know how to do it and they know tricks and they set up columns or they like multiply, but then they get, and they know like, all right, there's 60 seconds in every minute and there's 60 minutes in every hour. So I have to, but then where a lot of people get stuck is, but do I multiply or divide? Like, honestly, right? A lot of people where you get stuck is, I know I have to do this thing with like the number, with the conversion factor. And I even know what the conversion factor is, but I never know whether to divide or to multiply. And I'll say, and if you have ever had that thought, if you, and you don't have to admit it, but if you're any of us who have ever like, yeah, do I multiply or and then you like flip a coin secretly, um, or you play rock, paper, scissors with yourself, like then let's be honest, it's even more annoying and more confusing when you got to convert something that's already a fraction that's already in the denominator. Like we're going to convert second, I mean, uh, you know, hours to seconds here, but seconds, is, but it's in the denominator. Like that's a brain ache for many of us. So my trick, I'm going to just tell you right now, I'm going to do it. My trick for getting around all of that confusion of do I multiply or divide is I always multiply. I always multiply. I never divide. I either, and I multiply by either, and I always multiply by some version of the number one, because that's what I'm always allowed to do. If you multiply by one, you don't change your original number, right? So I always multiply by what I, in my mind, I call the well-chosen one. I always multiply by one and I just have to decide how to arrange the one. And the way I, in other words, I have to decide what to put in the numerator and what to put in the denominator, but then I'm gonna multiply. But I have to decide what to put, and the way I decide 
what to put in the numerator and what to put in the denominator is knowing, is arranging things so that the units I don't want cancel out. Let me, so bear with me for a minute. Even if you did this right, maybe this will help you in the future. Or, but certainly if you didn't like it, or if you did it right, but you did, you get my point. So bear, so this is what I do. I go like this. We have six, well, no, we don't. We have 30 miles per hour per second, right? Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I mean, hours per minute, I believe. Yeah, that was the original thing. And we're trying to get it in miles per second times second. Oh, which by the way, is what we mean by second squared. I should say that second squared just means second times second. It just means that the two units of time that are in the denominator, which we've said always has to be the case, that they happen to be the same. That's all the squared means, right? Again, miles per second squared does not mean Michael J. Fox in a flux capacitor. I'm like, we're squaring time, Woo! No, it just means seconds and seconds again in the denominator, right? So um, this is shorthand. So we want that. So how do we get? from 30 to some number that I don't know, miles per second per second, well, we multiply always by the well-chosen one. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this two, in fact, I better give myself room. I'm gonna do this twice because we're going from, sorry, I'm not changing them, I'm just giving myself more room. Don't freak. Um, right, so I'm gonna multiply by some version of one that deploys the, the uh, conversion vector, i.e., I'm going to convert those minutes to seconds, right? I'm going to convert from, I'm going to try to change that second, that word minute into the word second. So I know there's 60 seconds per minute. So what I'm going to do is say 60 seconds over one minute. That's my, right? Like, because that equals one. Because if the, if I don't know which is going to be the numerator, which is the denominator, but I'm going to put either 60 seconds over one minute, or I'm going to put one minute over 60 seconds. Either way, I know that equals, either way, the top and the bottom both are the same. Like one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So it's like putting seven over seven or 14 over 14 or X over X. It's one. So it's legal. It won't change anything. The only question is, should I put the minutes on top? Or should I put the minutes on the bottom? I'm going to put the minutes on the top because I want them to cancel out with those minutes on the bottom, right? So I'm left with seconds, right? So I'm literally going to multiply by one minute over six. This is how I think about it. I mean, sometimes I'm faster than this, but I'm never, ever dividing. I'm never asking myself, should I divide or multiply? I'm always multiplying by something that equals one. And I'm just deciding how to write my one and again, please forgive me. If you already understand this, great, good. Then you'll do fine in this class and it'll get more interesting. But maybe this is a perspective you've never considered. I put the minutes on top so they cancel with the minutes on the bottom. Also a secret side note. Yes, it ends up, if you look at what I'm doing, I am ultimately, I'm dividing by 60. I didn't make that conscious choice, but I'm dividing by 60. And that makes sense because my answer is going to get smaller because it should get smaller because a second is a lot less time than a minute. So I have less time to to accelerate, right? But so I do that, right? So now I have, miles per hour per second, right? And now I have to do it again. I have to, so I've converted one, now I have to convert from the hours to the second. So I'm gonna do it again. Now I'm gonna make a big leap to, I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna say in an hour, there's 60 minutes, and in a minute, there's 60 seconds. We already established. So I am going to, in my head, or on a sidebar, or on a calculator, please forgive me, but I think that six times six is 36. I do. So I think that 60 times 60 is 3,600. I do. Um, so I am going to skip that step in the writing. Put that in if it bothers you. But in other words, I'm going to go, okay, again, it seems like there are... Um, it seems like in one hour, there are three. Oh, so now I'm even wondering, did she? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, right. 
um, there are, I think, right? One hour divided by 30, one hour is the same as 3,600 seconds, I believe, because I believe 60 times 60 is 3,600. And, oh, cool, cool, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Felicia. That's huge class participation. Um, 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 and I think the hours cancel out. So like, that's, you know, I'm just doing the same logic. Again, I'm never going to do this again. We're not going to have a whole class on stoichiometry. But this is the way I think about doing units. And it always works um, once you get it. So the hours cancel. So now, now I'm left in the correct units. So now everything in the bottom is, if you do this, so it's going to be 30 divided by 60. But this is, it literally is what Felicia said a while ago. Like if you just do the math on the cap, either in your head or you do, like reduce the fraction. In other words, 30 over 60 is one half. Right, 30 over 60 here. I don't know who, right? That's that's the same thing as one half. So it's one half, one over two times 3,600 is 7,200, like Felicia and others, like Caitlin and uh, who else is that? Uh, Felicia, Caitlin, right? And Christina, awesome, awesome, right? They all said it. So you could leave that as your answer. Or if you just on a calculator do one divided by. So that's fine if that's your answer. That's great. It shows you know what's going on. Or you could do what, like a number of other wonderful people did, i.e., Caroline, e.g., direct tri private chat person, um, uh, Nicholas, Chloe, totally. All of you, please submit that for points. Um, so you get this. I'm saying a proxy. Yeah, I think I'm saying approximately just because I think digits were rounded after the nine. I mean, I think digits were chopped off, which is totally fine, but that's why I'm making this. But if I'm wrong about you, you can tell me. If it's exact, you can let me know. But so it's 1.39 times 10 to the negative fourth, really tiny number, miles per second squared, which now get bottom line of this whole Michigas. Like why I dragged this all out besides just quick excuse to do one unit version uh, practice, but it's also to emphasize the units mean something in acceleration. Like here's the other thing, I don't, somewhere in my physics life, I finally came to the realization that, oh, units actually do help. They're not just like this annoying thing that I have to do for years. They were just another annoying thing that I had to do to make my science teachers happy. But eventually, I got to the point where I was like, oh my God, the units actually make sense out of it. They're another thing that helps me know what's going on. They actually help me check my answers and da 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 and understand. Because the concept here of these units is miles per second squared. It sounds like arbitrary black magic, second squared, but it's really saying, okay, every second this car is getting faster by 0 0.00139 miles per second. Like it's a really small number because it's telling you how much faster it's getting. And, miles per second. And that's a really small number because it doesn't do that many miles every second. But this is what this rate is. It's consistent in miles per second per second. And then we could convert that to meters and it would be a more reasonable number because meters are smaller than miles, but that's our answer. And so bottom line, velocities are always in meters per second or space per times. And accelerations are always in space per time squared or space per time times other kind of time. There, that's the bottom line of this. Acceleration is two units of time in the denominator. If they're the same, you could just say squared and that's all the squared means. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm totally happy to have any questions, to answer any questions. I'm gonna move I'm moving on if there aren't questions, but please, but I'm totally psyched with everybody's participation on this. Like really, like I feel like we're a class, it's bizarre. Um, I feel like we're a max raid battle in shield. No, okay, um, no, I feel like we're a class. We're not a competition. We're a party of, of okay. Um, and when we make a mistake, we don't die. We just faint. You know what I'm saying? We get resurrected immediately. And we might even be first. Okay, anyway. So are we good? I'm going to go move on. I'm going to move on until our last question. I'm moving on. I'm also changing. That's a yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the next question. Now it gets a little harder. Oh, that's a little harder. Um, you know what? In order to make tracks two now, I'll tell you, I think you can all handle this. I'm, now, I'm looking at the sheet. I don't have the sheet screen shared. I hope you're looking at the sheet. I'm looking at the sheet. I'm gonna look at question four and five with your, I'm actually, I think because we're doing so well here and we're making tracks and I'd like to get to the other equation. I think question four and five, stop me if you don't like this, but I think I'm gonna say the answers to four and five and you're gonna write them down. Like, I don't wanna leave you 
but I'm not even going to bother. Like, I don't want to get myself all involved in a big, I think I can just say the answers. And if you have questions, you're going to stop me. Okay. In fact, wait, I'm going to change. I'm going to check in with you here on this. Hold on. I would like, I'm changing the view just so I can see all the black boxes. Okay. Okay. With your, if you raise, raise your electronic hand, if it's okay with you, if I just like say the answers to the next two questions, knowing that you can stop me if you have any questions, but it, but I'm not going to write them. To, cool. Cool. All right. So again, and keep them up for a second. I just want to make sure Raise your hand if it's cool that I just say the answers or if it's clear that I'm going to just say the answers to the next couple and we'll get to, all right. That's, Okay, that seems like thank you all. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to say. Okay, it's not everybody, but it seems like most people. If you have an privately text me now if you have an objection to that or if you or something or if there's something specific you want to know. But all right, I'm going to do that. I don't know what my you'd think I'd be used to these things by now. All right, so here we go. I'm going to say, but again, it doesn't mean I'm not racing you. If you don't understand something, stop me. But hold on, I'm just switching the sheet so I can see. Hold on, hold on. But I will say the answers. Okay, here they are. All right, so quit. And then what we're gonna what we're gonna dwell on a little. My whole goal is to get to question six, which is the last question on the sheet. Which means we're almost caught up with ourselves because the next sheet isn't even due till Friday. My goal is to get to question six. That I'm gonna talk about at some length. All right, question four: acceleration and direction. Okay, so we got this. I'll read just remind. Please, I hope you're looking at the sheet, your own version of the sheet. But we got an Audi who's driving east, and it's speeding up. We've got a Buick that's driving west. It's speeding up. We've got a Camry that's driving east. It's slowing down. We've got a dirt bike that's driving west, and it's slowing down, and, and we're given numbers. Uh, first, it says choose which direction. I'm going to say, I'm going to declare east. So I'm going to make a little diagram. If I were you, if I were handing in the homework, I'd make a little diagram of a little coordinate system, and I would call east positive. I would call West negative. You could do the reverse. You could totally make West positive and East negative, and all your answers will be different from mine, but Galileo's principle of relativity, where it's choosing our own inertial reference frame, where it's choosing our own coordinate system. The laws are physics in all inertial reference frames. As long as our coordinate systems themselves are assumed to be not accelerated, then your coordinate system is just as valid as mine. So you can make either choice you want and you get full credit in life, in government funded research and on an exam. But you need to make a choice. You need to have a diagram. It needs to be clear for the rest. Your answers don't mean anything unless they're in a specified coordinate system. So I'm saying right now, my choice so that you could follow my answers. My choice is gonna be that East is positive. And that, that is not always a better choice. I mean, I think it, I think it is here, but I'm gonna make East positive. I'm gonna make West negative. All my answers are based on that. If you did the opposite, then your answers will often be the opposite of mine and that's fine. But I'm telling you right now, you have to choose one or the other. And in order to listen to my answers, you have to know what my choice was that I just said. All right, so I choose East to be, and that's all part of what the big discussion about train of thought and Galileo is all about. Okay, so I choose that East is positive. I choose that West is negative. That's question A. Question B, given the choice that I made in A, write down the initial and final velocity of each vehicle, use positive and negative signs. Okay, okay. So the Audi is always going East. So it's, oh, sorry. And what's weird is too, Sorry, sorry. You know, actually, there's a slight error in this question. I apologize. It should have really said somewhere explicitly. I'm not even sure why I didn't. I don't know why I never caught this before. The question really should have said uh, that these things either, each of these things either starts at rest or ends at rest. Like, it doesn't actually say that. And that's actually weird. And I apologize. So we don't actually know what their initial velocity is. That is a little bit weird, but I'm gonna say that, right. so I apologize. Let's say right now, assume that each of these cars either begins at rest or ends at rest. I'm just saying that, okay. And by the way, you can do that in an exam. It, uh, this is kind of like that hill problem. If you ever feel like you're missing information, you fill it in your way, at least conditionally, so that you can move on. Then you'll either find at the end that you didn't even need that information, it's okay, or, if at the end you still needed it, then at worst you lose a couple of points for making up that information, but then everything you do based on it is right. So I'm saying, if this is an exam right now, I'm saying, assume that each of these objects starts at rest or ends at rest. Okay, so I'm saying, therefore, 
for the choices. Um, the initial velocity of the Audi is at zero. The final velocity is positive 50. The initial uh, velocity of the Buick is zero. The final velocity is negative 50, right? The, the Camry, um, the initial velocity. Oh, I'm so, oh my God. See, I just did, I just did exactly. I'm so sorry. Okay, it's a good thing we're talking about this. Not, sorry, it totally does tell us. I'm so sorry. If they don't start it, oh my God. Okay, we're going to open up a portal for people who politely don't pounce on me when I make a huge error. No, it does give you all the facts here. I'm so, but see, if I were taking an exam now, I would have realized, well, you get my point. Sorry, back, oh, and I'm looking at the chat. Sorry, yeah, 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 it was. You're totally right, direct chat person. I'm a crazy man. It totally is. The whole thing I just said about at rest, I was moving too fast. I was not paying attention. I'm so sorry. You're absolutely right, direct chat person and anybody else. Let me back up. The initial... All right, I'm going back to question B, my bad. The initial velocity of the Audi is positive 10. The final velocity is positive 50. That's the Audi. Forget everything I said about zero. That was me in the therapist chair. Okay, question B, of, of part B of question four. The, for the Audi, the initial velocity is positive 10. The final is positive 50. For the Buick, the initial velocity is negative 10. The final velocity is negative 50, negative 50, because it's going west the whole time. Now, that's not a mistake. Ne even though it's sped up, it's final. And you can stop me in the chat privately or publicly if you don't like that. But the Buick is starting at negative 10. It ends at negative 50. The Camry it starts at positive 50. It ends at positive 10. The dirt brake starts at negative 50. It ends at negative 10. Those are my, now again, I apologize for making an answer, uh, a mistake two minutes ago, but those are my answers to part B. In fact, I'm even going to ask, I'm not looking at your face right now because I'm looking at the sheet, but can people just quickly put in the chat if they're with me so far, if they just, if you're still with me, if I didn't lose you with that error, just put in the chat. Like if you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I love this class. I love this class. I'm going to teach for another 50 years. Thanks to you. Thank you. You're like, you're great. What second prize? Thank you. Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you. I totally appreciate it. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. My, and, and I will apologize to, to all electrons, to my therapist and to my Lord for that mistake. Okay. They're all the same. Okay. Um, uh, and to the Pokemon tra trainer, Leon. Okay. C. Calculate the average acceleration of each vehicle. Okay, now this is almost interesting now. This is like almost worth the exercise. <laughs> I probably did not save any time talking about this, not writing it down, but okay. Calculate the average acceleration of each vehicle during these 10 seconds. And we're using the definition, which by the way, the sheet keeps writing slightly differently from the way I'm writing on the board, but I hope you see there's a, they're both equivalent. They're not a mistake. They write it slightly differently in the sheet. It has some advantages because it makes you think about slope and derivatives and all that. I write it slightly differently. Hopefully you see that they're the same thing. Stop me if you don't. I mean, or you know, text me if you don't or whatever. But calculate the average acceleration of each vehicle during these 10 seconds. Okay. For the Audi, the average acceleration of the vehicle is four, is positive four meters per second squared, positive four meters per second squared, i.e. 40 divided by 10. Okay. But it's positive four for the, that's Audi, positive four meters per second squared. For the Buick, it is, it is negative four meters per second squared. It's neg, and you have to say it with that accent. I'm just kidding. It is negative for the Buick. And here's where really in the chat, really don't be ashamed. If you have an issue with what I'm saying, you would not be stupid or immoral or something like that. If you, and it is all about the negative and positive signs right now. Let me say that too. Don't, don't think, well, I got it right, but I was off by a negative sign. No, no, we're totally all about the positives and negatives right now. If all of your answers are literally flipped from mine, that might mean that your coordinate system is the reverse of mine. And then that's all fine. As long as you're internally consistent, but your pattern of negative signs and positive signs does want to match mine. And it is slightly tricky to some of us. This is not that you might get it, which is fine. I mean, good, but it's not obvious. Don't be ashamed of you. So I'm going to keep going, but please watch these negative signs and don't be ashamed to challenge me, especially since I just made an error anyway, if you have an issue. So I think A was positive four 
meters per second squared. I think B is negative four meters per second squared. I think C is, I think C, yeah, C is negative four meters per second squared. And I think D is positive four. Oh, uh, oh, that's very fair too. Okay, hold on. So let me, I'll say it one more time and then and maybe I'm mistaken, I don't think so. Okay, I'll tell you. Well, good, I see a very good question in the private chat. Hang on a second. But I think that the dirt bike, just to finish this up, the dirt bike is going positive, an acceleration, an average acceleration of positive four meters per second squared. Now, let me say two things. One, there's a very, very good question in the private chat that I bet is not only that one person. The private chat person is not disturbed by my negative signs, but the private chat person is saying, how am I getting four? He or she is getting five each time. Totally fair. But, and that may be because of the confusion. I, I'll tell you why I'm getting four. I don't think it's a mistake, but I think I may have caused confusion five minutes ago when I was talking about things being at rest, which I, the problem says that the initial, say the Audi, for example, the Audi starts at 10 and speeds up to 50. So it's V naught is 10. It's final V is 50. So it's, if you're just like straight up doing the equation, it would be 50 minus 10 all over the number 10. So it's 50 minus 10, which equals 40 all over 10. And then, you know, the fraction reduces or whatever, and you get four. In other words, what I'm saying, and this is very important, I mean, it's a really fair question. And I hope that person does tell me once and if they do get what I'm, that average acceleration is change in velocity per time. These situations, these four, we were given an initial velocity and we were given a final, even though I missed that at first. Like I did bad reading at first, but we are given the two points of velocity to compare to each other, to see a difference, to literally subtract. So the difference each time is some version of 50 mi minus 10 or something like it's the, oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, great. So cool, thank you, but great point. So yeah, in English, average acceleration is the change from beginning to the end of velocity. And just to everybody too, not to dwell on this, but it's a great question and please submit for points and all that for participation. Note to everybody, this is another example of what I said like weeks ago where X naught, and now we're talking about V naught, the value of some variable naught, like subscript zero, is not necessarily zero. The value of a variable at time equals zero frequently is some number other than zero. And we always want to track that. But okay, I think that person gets it. It was a great question. Hopefully everybody else gets it. Now, I'm going to move on. But the thing you really want to all ask yourself is, are you comfortable with these positive and negative signs? Because if you are, you'll notice a pattern in that question. In fact, it's sort of like slant, drumming it into you in the next question in part five. What we're really trying to get at here in question four, if we step back, like all of this physics, notice this whole class started with a lot of English. And then we're trying to convert our English into mathematical symbolism. The point, because mathematical symbolism is other, ultimately more precise and more efficient. But it's supposed to, all the math is supposed to capture concepts that actually make sense to us that we think in our native language, like which for me is English. And hopefully those of you who speak more than one language, like hopefully you're translating my English into your, and I'm not being sarcastic. Like we want to first think in our language, and then convert it to math because ultimately math is more powerful, more efficient, more precise for this type of thinking. But the thinking is still thinking. Why, why am I saying all that? Because the word acceleration now is, or the equation for average acceleration is supposed to always go back to your English notion of the word acceleration, but it's more refined, it's more precise. That is, we now have, we don't ever use the word deceleration in physics. Everything is acceleration. It's either positive acceleration or it's negative, okay? But what I wanna make absolutely clear to you right now is do not think that negative acceleration necessarily or always means slowing down. It, there, it, does, it can, but it doesn't have to. Negative acceleration means the velocity numbers are getting lower. Negative acceleration means we're losing velocity per time. Since velocity means speed and direction, 
to lose velocity in time. This is very important. You might remember this from high school, you might not. To lose velocity in time could either mean that you have positive velocity numbers that are getting less positive, or it could mean that you have negative velocity numbers that are getting more negative. In other words, to have a negative acceleration can either mean moving in the positive direction getting slower, or it could equally mean moving in the negative direction getting faster. Please note that. And that's not, and there's a reason for that. It actually ultimately, I think, makes sense, but maybe not initially when you, okay, there's two cases of negative acceleration and there's two cases of positive acceleration. Positive acceleration either means you're moving positively and getting faster or you're moving negatively and getting slower. Either way, it means that your velocity numbers are trending more positive, but it's, okay, I'm just going to, so if you have any questions on that, please let me know, but just note, that's the takeaway from question four. I know we only have 14 minutes. I'd like to get to question five. I mean, question six, let me just look at question three. Okay, I think five I can do. I'm going to go question five now. Just, I really think I'm going to say the answers fast unless you have questions, but I love that question. Please keep them coming. Okay, question five, a Roman numeral five, acceleration and direction sub two. Okay, part A, a particle is moving at a velocity of negative 17 meters per second. What's its speed? Answer is its speed is 17. Like speed is the magnitude of velocity. So if its velocity is negative 70, its speed is 17. What does the negative sign in the velocity indicate? What determines whether velocity is negative or positive? Just reviewing what I just explained. A negative sign in a velocity means the thing is going in a direction that we've previously assigned as negative, right? I mean, it, it's all based on our assignment of coordinate systems. So you always have to establish your coordinate system first. But once you decide this way is positive and that way is negative, then anything going that way will be called negative. That's all it means, right? So then it says, in some, so then a change in velocity, right? A positive change in velocity means more and more negative. Again, that could mean you're in negative. You get my point. It could mean one of two things. That's what I was just yelling a second ago. So then part C, uh, some hydrogen atom is found to have a positive acceleration for some segment of motion. During that motion, is the hydrogen atom necessarily speeding up? Why are we not? This is literally what I was just explaining a second ago. If you're told that something has a positive acceleration, do not think that that automatically means the thing is speeding up. It either means it's moving in the positive direction and speeding up, or it could just as easily mean it's moving in the negative direction, slowing down. And there's a reason for all this. It's not just a language game and it's not meant to go against what you already think in English. It's meant to refine and be more detailed and more specific and more, and ultimately more powerful than what you already think in English. But it's all based on, it's all tethered to what you already think in English. Never get rid of what you think in English. Just refine it for physics. Okay, so that's question five. Uh, I'm just going to chat. Okay, blah, 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 blah. All right, question six. I've got 12 minutes. I'm going to be a little fast about this, but only a little bit. I mean, sometimes this whole thing could be a big class discussion. I'm, it's not going to be a discussion now. I mean, let's be, because we have 12 minutes. Here's the deal with, all right, so I'm going to go to question six. Um, uh, we have all these, and again, hopefully you're looking at the sheet. I'm just jotting down things here now. You have, first this row of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, the average of those numbers, I'm telling you right now, is number four, as you might have. One way I could get it, I, I could literally add seven plus six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. I could add them all up and get 18, 22, 25, 20, 28, right? And then divide by the number of numbers. There's all of them added together is 28. There's seven numbers. 28 divided by seven is four. That's the answer, right? Same thing with all of the rest, well, for a while. The, the average of the next one, same method. If I add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers, just like you've always learned in math, I'll find that the average to the next one is seven. I'll find that the average to the third one is nine. If I add all up and divide by, and if you're doing homework, you should show the work and stuff. I'm not now, because like I'm the teacher, so I'm pulling rank on them because we only have 11 minutes. But every single one of these, you can get the average by doing arithmetic mean, adding up all the numbers, dividing by the number of numbers. Um, e, but I'm not showing my work, but it's true. So number four, if you add them all up, you'll get, and divide by seven or however many there are, you'll get 27. On the fifth one, if you add them all up and uh, uh, you divide by this time six, there's only six numbers, you'll get the number 11. Um, and now on this one, I might ask you, I don't remember. On this one, in fact, 14, 30, 55, 55, uh, 81, and 81. Um, 
I think so 130, 81, right? Yeah, 130. So 130 divided by seven is one is 16. 130 divided by seven is one. Uh, no, 130. Oh, it doesn't go in the eat. Right. 100, you, someone put in the, actually, someone. Okay, we've got 10 minutes. I ask you. I, I think. I think it was 140, which was the. Yeah. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, adding them all. Oh, thank you, Felicia. Oh, she's walking. Oh, to adding them all up, you got 140. That's what you're saying? Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, cool. What did I do? Okay, cool. That ye okay. I thank you. No, that's cool. You could say cool. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you. You guys are so paying attention. You're so going to graduate school or heaven, whichever you prefer. Same thing. Um, not at all. Um, so 140. Okay. So then 140 divided by seven is 20, right? Right. Okay. So that's a little bit. Yeah. Oh, 20. Okay. So do you get 20 then? Can I get a group? Do you get 20? For, oh, no, no, no. I agree, Nicholas. I totally agree. Um, um, yes. Okay, cool. So here's my point now. Okay. Those are the, whoa, I don't know what that is. So those are the answers, but now look, this is the game we're playing. It's one of these things doesn't belong. Here's the deal here. And this is a punchline. This is a point. Oh, well, yeah, it even asks like, Oh, and sorry, I think I mentioned this in a Google Street. That last thing about stare at the fourth equation in the right hand. So sorry about that. We don't have that website anymore. It was from a long time ago when I had a website. Like, don't even worry about that thing. But what's the point of this whole thing? What it's alerting you to is the first five answers. You, I'm sure you noticed that the first five answer. Uh, yeah, well, certainly the first four answers and kind of even the fifth one. The average, the arithmetic mean the mean was the median in all the first five, right? If you notice, I could add all the numbers together and divide by the number of numbers. And the answer I get after all of that computation is just literally the number that's sitting there in the middle, staring me in the face once these numbers are arranged in the order that they are, right? Even like uh, row four, where the numbers are like bizarre, like 12, 17, 22, 27, 32. They're, still, the average there is just literally the number right in the center, 27. And even number five, where the average doesn't seem to be one of the numbers, it's 11. It's still the number that's like right in the middle of all the numbers, even though it is, if you see what I'm saying, right? But so in all of them, it seemed like once you see what's going on, you could almost just skip a lot of work and just do this trick and say, oh, the average number is the middle number. You could say, oh, if I want the mean, Yavrabam is asking for the mean, but I could just like eyeball the median and they're one and the same. So I'm done. Good night, America. Right. But that doesn't work on the very last example. And this is not a trick. This is important to show something. With the seven minutes left, and again, you may already realized it and feel free to put in the chat if you want a theory as to what's going on here. And I'll totally, I mean, I'm going to keep talking because I want to make sure to get this out before the end, but feel free to let me know in the chat if you like already see where I'm going with this. And I'm sure some of you do. That trick is not an accident. It's not a coincidence. It's totally a reliable, surefire technique that the median will equal the mean but only under a very specific condition, a condition that applies to the first five and does not apply to the six. The condition that, again, I'm sure some of you see is that in the first five examples, the numbers have been all arranged. Well, in all of the examples, the numbers have been arranged in order. You could, they were averaging things. You could put them in any order you want, like addition is commutative. All of these numbers are arranged in ascending order to make it easier to eyeball them. But in the first five arrangements, it, you can see they're not just in order of getting bigger and bigger, but they're actually increasing by steady amounts, right? All that, like, like in the first row there, each number is increasing by one. It's like one, two, three, four, five. In the, in the third one, they're increasing by two, three, five, seven, nine. In the fourth one, they're increasing by five, 12, 17, 22, et cetera, et cetera, right? As long as the numbers are increasing or decreasing by a steady amount, then the middle is the average. It may, if you think, and that's a truism, I'm saying as long as numbers change by an unchanging increment, as long as they change by a constant amount. So they are changing, but they're not changing the way they are changing, right? 
as long as they're changing by a constant amount, then the median equals the mean with numbers, with numbers. In the very last row, there's certainly a pattern there. Oh, there's definitely a pattern. No two ways about it. Those numbers are like the perfect squares. They, but the thing with that pattern is those numbers are increasing by an increasing amount, right? The gap between like one, four, nine, 16, there's definitely a pattern there. And there's something deep going on that we're going to return to. But if you notice, I mean, and if you did the whole bolt string lab, woohoo, like this is all about the bolt string lab, ultimately, um, that last thing, like the gap between four and one is three. Like there's a gap of three between, but then the gap between four and nine is five. Then the gap between nine and 16 is seven. Then the gap in the next one is nine. Like that's definitely a pattern. Something's going on there. But what's happening there is that the increase is increasing. First, you're increasing by three, then you're increasing by five, blah, blah, blah. So that's not a steady increase. What am I getting at with all of this with four minutes left? I'm sure you see. Imagine that these numbers all stand for velocities. Imagine that each one of these numbers is a certain number of mile of meters per second, and each new number is a new second, right? So imagine each number of these is a speedometer reading that you're taking every single second. Then what we're saying, what we're ultimately concluding from all this is as long as velocity is changing in an unchanging way, as long as velocity is changing in a constant way, put it as long as acceleration exists, but is one steady number, that's what we're saying, right? As long as something is accelerating, but always in the same way, as long as acceleration is a constant, then the average velocity is the middle velocity. I'll put in an equation for it. If and only if acceleration is a constant, right? If there is acceleration, sure, like even if there's a change of velocity, but as long as that change is not itself changing, right? So as long as we're always gaining speed or losing speed or turning by the same amount, then, so if and only if A equals A naught, then average velocity e does equal the average of velocities. Whoa, whoa, like, in other words, the whole thing, and I know we have three minutes, I'm saying that's something very deep and possibly confusing. I made a big point with the whole Grandma Grimm problem and the whole uh, Little Red Riding Hood problem, that average velocity does not mean average of velocities. That average velocity doesn't necessarily mean mean velocity or median or anything. It means displacement per time. And I stand by that. The definition of average velocity is displacement over time. And I stand by the idea that you can't just randomly take two velocities and add them together and divide by two and expect that to be the average unless you have an acceleration rate that is reliably constant. If we're always gaining velocity by the same amount or always losing by the same amount, then that means every, every second above the middle second, we gain the same amount as we lost every second below the middle second. It means that all the velocities to the right of the middle are, are as much to the right as all the velocities to the left of the middle. So I'm saying, if and only if acceleration is a constant, then you can get average velocity by just taking the first and taking the last, adding them together, dividing by two, that will get you the average of the whole thing. That will get you the, in other words, the mean will equal the median. If the mean velocity, and this is it, we're done, but uh, sorry, the mean velocity will equal the median velocity if and only if acceleration is constant. Not if there's no acceleration. If there's no acceleration, there's no need for any of this discussion. So velocity could be changing, but as long as it's changing in a constant way, then we have a new way of getting average velocity. We can average the first and last and just get the middle from that as long as this condition is met. That's the take, but it's a double equal sign. It's not always true. It's only true under this condition. This is called, and we still technically apparently have 45 seconds. This equation we just got today, which is your fifth equation so far, notice it's coming under an if and only, it's our first double equal sign equation. It's conditional. So it's, so this is not a definition. This is called, please make a note of this since we're done. This is called our first constant acceleration equation. It's not an equation about acceleration. It's an equation that's only true if acceleration is a constant. 
This is an equation that's true under the condition that acceleration is a constant. It is a constant acceleration equation. It's our first, it's our fifth equation of the year so far. We're actually really starting to make tracks now, I feel like, which is great. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. So you could stay for a second if you have questions, but you are free to frolic. Thank you. And Guy and Gimbal in the way. Thank you. you guys really have a good day. Thank you. Have a great day, Professor. Thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Have a good day, folks. Seriously. I really appreciate your And Amy, you're there. Are we there? Hello. So Amy, oh, well, have a good day. Or Amy, are you still there? So I'm going once, going twice. Going once, going twice. Goodbye.